Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Strange Fantasy. I'm Travis. And I'm Ashley. We're the creators, writers, and producers of the show. And we just want to take a quick second before diving into tonight's tawdry tale to let you know that if you like Strange Fantasy, be sure and show your love by subscribing, downloading, and rating the show on iTunes or any of the many platforms we exist on. And for exclusive rewards and merchandise, or just to donate to our cause that helps us continue to thrive, be sure to visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange fantasy. Also be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Strange Fantasy Show for updates or haunting original art. All of this and more can be found at our website, strangefantasyshow.com. And now, your feature presentation. Welcome to another regaling of strange fantasy. Obscure odysseys meant to shock the nervous system and stir the very core of your soul. Tonight's tale is of escaping death. What if a fate not of your own was forced upon you? Would you accept it and lay down to die? Or would you rise against it, undertaking the great escape from a terrible misfortune? One can only try. In this installment entitled, Song of the Warden. Governor Thornton's reaction to remain undecided and the foregoing of Prison Warden Malcolm Turnpelt's reinstatement has undoubtedly brought tension to the atypical nature of the two separated houses at Madison State Penitentiary. State and congressional officials have been seeking to repeal the death penalty's current stance for some time now, and with such deafening silence from the governor, this may be Warden Turnbelt's final term before his position as acting death row executioner becomes terminated. In other news, a judge... Popular pie plant, pictured here. I say good riddance. How is death even a viable option? I never understood that. If said person has committed a crime, there should at least be an atoning opportunity given before ending that person's life is ever discussed as a substitution. It's sick. Well, I agree with you. But? But I also agree with having such a system in place. People are inherently evil, so when religious dogma fails, man's rule takes its place. It looms the ultimate consequence over our heads. People are not inherently evil, Charlie. How could you even think that? People shouldn't need such an awful burden to keep them moral. Death is a burden that follows us always. Just like a shadow. Even after knowing this fact, some people still choose to act as if there were nothing there to fear. And what of the final decision? What do you mean? Someone still has to make the call, and someone still has to pull the switch. And? How could that possibly be a decision for another person to make? It happens every day. No, no. Don't you dismiss my question. How is it that one person can make the decision that this man or woman can't possibly be rehabilitated into society? So, best just to kill them. Does that sound rational to you? Who, me? 
Well, I've got to say, you both make very valid points. But? But I agree with him, sweetheart. Coming from someone who's been mugged five times in the past six months, and three of them were from the same asshole crook. Can you believe that? I mean, you know, so I say a man, you know, is inherently evil. And it doesn't matter if God or the devil is after him. They just live fast and die even faster. <laughs> yes, you see, point Charlie. <laughs> Fair enough. So, can I bring y'all over any desserts or coffee? You want anything else, Charlie? Nah, I couldn't eat another bite. Dinner was great tonight. My compliments to the chef. All right, you two. Well, have a good night and thanks for stopping in. Take care. So, you want to catch a late movie? I'm kind of tired. So, uh, you alright? Yeah, why you ask? No reason. You, you just seem anxious lately. <laughs> You're such a dork. I love you. I love you too. But come on, talk to me. What's going on? Well, Charlie, I kind of have some big news. Oh god, your parents are coming into town? <laughs> no, no. At least not yet. <laughs> Hold out with it already. Charlie? I... Hey, bitch! Is he talking to us? I don't know. Charlie, let's get the hell out of here. Where's the car parked? Come on, it's right over here. Don't worry. I, 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 just keep walking. Hey, God damn it! I'm talking to you! He's getting closer. Get in the car now, Carol! Hey! Don't you walk away from me! You slow, man! <laughs> Charlie! Shut up! Help! Someone please help us! Sayonara, bitch! Carol. Carol. No! Hey, kid. Catch! No, no, god damn you! Oh, no, god, no, no. This isn't happening, this isn't happening. Carol, baby. Oh, god. Shit. Don't die. Freeze! Drop your weapon! Drop it! Please! No! It's not me, you want. He ran that way! Officer, please listen to me and the man who did this man that way. Stop talking! Put your goddamn hands in the air! Do it! Good. Now slowly stand up, turn around, and face me. Now walk slowly toward me, and keep your goddamn hands up! Do it! No! Let go of me! No! The maniac killed her, please! Final warning! Stop resisting! You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do will be used against you in the court of law. Carol. See, Grayson? Possessions consist of one psycho wristwatch, one leather wallet containing a photo ID, three credit cards, one photograph, and $38. Possessions continued. One disposable lighter, one pack of cigarettes, and one small jewelry box containing one ring. Jesus, man, did you steal this off of her body after you killed her? That's sick. What? No. <laughs> can, can I please take the photograph from my wallet with me? No, you cannot. Now go stand over there for your mug shots. Stand straight. Turn to your left. Now to your right. Please, I didn't kill her. You've got the wrong man. I didn't kill her. You're pleading to the wrong crowd, kid. I just take the pictures. You're done. Get the hell out of here. Come on, dirtbag. Move. Well, well, what about my phone call? So, don't I get a phone call? There ain't no one you can call to save your ass now, dirtbag. Now move. This doesn't look good at all, Charlie. What you've gotten yourself into here, I... I'm not sure I can help get you out of this. This is bad, Charlie. Like, death penalty bad. Do you understand? You've gotta be shitting me, Carl. You're my goddamn attorney and my father's closest friend. You can't let them convict me of this. I didn't kill her, Carl, I swear. I loved her. Like you couldn't believe we were gonna... Uh, all right, all right. We were gonna move in together, all right? 
I was gonna marry her. I had the ring on me, Carl. I wouldn't kill her. I couldn't. Your fingerprints were all over the gun, Charlie. You loaded only one bullet. The odds are stacked up against you here. The man. What about him? No one will believe me. He's the one that killed her, Carl. The man... It just doesn't add up, Charlie. No witnesses to prove there was ever a third party to the murder. Just you holding a gun over Carol's lifeless body. How any of this is being pinned on me is what doesn't add up, Carl. Why am I the only one being blamed for this? Muggings go horribly wrong all the time. Why will anybody believe me? As I recall not too long ago, you and Carol had taken some time apart from each other, correct? Yeah, we did. She needed some time to figure some things out. But we got back together, so that shouldn't matter. Why did she need time apart? Is that relevant? Yes, it is, Charlie. If we stand any sort of chance in court tomorrow, then I need to know everything. Fine. She may have had feelings for another guy. An old friend from her college days showed back up. Daxton. <laughs> Such a stupid name befitting of a perfect tool. <clears throat> I'm telling you, this guy sucked all the air out of the room and then blew it all out his ass. Is this relevant? No. So anyway... We all went out for drinks one night. I may have had one too many. I began challenging Douchebag in a battle of wits. He lost, of course. But then he started challenging me with his brute. And I'm still not sure what happened that night, but I ended up beating the living hell out of that poor guy. So Carol, I guess, got a little scared by my actions. I wanted to take a break. Mostly so I could get my head clear again. She was so smart. Oh, God. Hey, hey, look at me, Charlie. Look at me in the eyes and tell me the truth. Did you kill Carol? No, no, no. I swear on my father's grave, Carl. I did not kill Carol. Okay, I believe you. Gonna take a goddamn miracle to get everyone else to believe, but... I think we stand a chance. Order. Order in the court. Mr. Finstar, if you please approach the bench. Of course, Your Honor. Uh, Carl, is this a good thing? We're about to find out. Don't worry, Charlie, I've got this. Carl, I just want to say... I know this one's personal for you, and throughout all the years, please know that you've earned my utmost respect. They don't make attorneys like you anymore, and that's a fact. Well, thank you, Ramona. I appreciate your respect. So, what's the call? If you'll please return to your seat, I'm ready to give my final verdict. Yes, Your Honor. Well, I don't know. Just listen. Mr. Charles Henry Grayson, please rise. Myself and a jury of your peers have come to a final verdict concerning the repercussions of your actions. You are hereby found guilty for the crime of murder and the first degree against Carol Ann Weathers. What? Therefore, you'll be sentenced to death at Madison State Penitentiary in eight days' time. Do you understand your punishment? <laughs> Everything is flawed! The situation, the system, you people, all of it flawed. I don't deserve this. I didn't kill her. I loved her. Believe me! Please believe me. I don't deserve this! Order! I said order in this court! You will not make a mockery of my courtroom, son. Your courtroom is a mockery! You don't believe in justice! Only injustice, you piece of shit! I demand a retrial! Charlie, please, calm down. Or it's over. We lost, pal. You pathetic pile of garbage! You lied to me! You said we stood a chance, you rotten bastard! Ah, get, get off me, Charlie! The hell, get him off me! Order! Guards, remove this maniac from my courtroom at once! No! No! God, please believe me! Please!
Welcome to your temporary home, dead man. What is this place? This little slice of heaven? You know, myself and Warden Turnveld like to refer to Death Row House as a nice, safe place to be. Do you know why that is, inmate? No. Hmm. Well, apart from being separate from the main estate, if you were to look around here, you'd see there ain't really that much going on, is there? No, I guess not. Yet, within all the stillness, there can be seen the subtle movements of how we operate. How many cells you count in here, boy? Five. Very good. And how many inmates do you see? Three. Hmm. Curious as to why you excluded yourself from the count. Let me guess. You don't think you belong here. I'm going to say wrongfully accused. Am I right? Yes. Dear God, please. I, I don't belong here. I didn't kill her. First off, inmate, I don't know who the hell her is, nor do I care. And we wouldn't be talking right now if you didn't belong here. Yourself, just like all the others, will atone for your sins. And when your day arrives, you'll choose one of many stances. You'll scream, weep, remain silent, or beg. And it ain't to God, it'll be to the warden. <laughs> you'll probably piss yourself, too. Actually, you will piss yourself. I've been doing this for over 15 years now, and not once has someone kept it dry. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Is there anything else you need from me before I go? You signed him in already. Yes, sir. All right, then. Get the hell on out of here. You've overstayed your welcome as it is. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. No need to be sorry. Just don't let it happen again. Understood? Yes, sir. Good. Now off you go. You know, you remind me of somebody. Can't quite place it on who, though. I'd have come to me. Well, inmate, let's become more acquainted, shall we? My name is Officer Donald Knox, and I keep the operation of this house flowing perfectly. Just like a machine. A death machine? Yes, a death machine. Anyway... You have a grand total of seven days remaining, and in this time you will conduct yourself with respect. I absolutely do not tolerate crude and disrespectful behavior for my inmates. No one here will take pity upon you or your situation. All of that is now moot. We do not give a good god damn, so please keep the pity party to yourself. Questions? Where's the warden? The warden? is where he should be, in his office, preparing and arresting for tonight. What's tonight? Well, it's special for this evening is going to be old Paul here. Ain't that right, Paul? Yes, sir. T tonight's the uh, uh, big night. Jesus. Hey, now, what did I say about pitying? Especially for those poor bastard. You see, old Paul here killed a nine-year-old girl by drowning her in a small creek bed. And that is exactly the face you should be making at this worthless human being. Disgust and nothing more. Can I please just go to my cell? Oh, what's the rush? You ain't got nowhere to be. <laughs> Come on, let me introduce you to another real vicious bastard. This year is Joseph Knight. Likes to call himself Midnight. But don't let his soulful gaze take hold of you. He may not look like an interesting enough fella, but beneath the surface lies a stone cold murder. Ain't that right, Midnight? He don't really talk all that much. But if you get the son of a bitch going, you won't hear the end of it. I had to taser him just yesterday for fussing too much. Finally on our death row shit list is Jean St. Gilleroy. A French immigrant who found his place in our country by becoming an infamous jewel thief. But nothing is ever left unpunished, ain't that right, Sean? Okay. Screw you, Knox. When my day comes, it won't be long thereafter until we meet once again in hell. Okay. Now, Sean, why would you go and do a thing like that? Have you no respect for me? For my situation? For your situation? 
This attitude of yours is no good, and if you want to keep that attitude for the next five days, then consider it fine by me. But when your day comes, I can't say the warden will be too happy with your report card. He may decide to take his time with you. And you don't want that, do you, Sean? No. No what? No, sir? I'm talking to you, Sean! No, sir. No, sir. <sighs> Good. Well, inmate, that's a lot of them for now. If you'd like to take a moment to introduce yourself to the others, maybe say a thing or two about your life, so that way we're all acquainted. Hello, everyone. My name is Charlie Grayson. I am... Um believe I am here with you today because of a flawed justice system. They say I shot and killed my girlfriend. And I say that an unknown man shot and killed her. But the odds are against me. And I have no way to prove my innocence. Oh, I, um, I b believe, believe, believe you, t t Charlie. Thanks, Paul. Hmm. So you think you're an innocent man, is that right? I know I am. Hmm. Perhaps you are. Or perhaps you're just as deranged as a lot of them. I'm nothing like these men. I don't belong here. You seem awfully sure of yourself, being a baby killer and all. The hell are you talking about? Oh, I've seen your file. I know all about you and what you've done, Charlie. She was pregnant with your child. What did you just say? Maybe that's why you done it. Hell, I get it. We're all bound to make mistakes with whores we don't want to keep around. What? I, I don't... She was... Oh, God, Carol. You stop that crying right now, boy. You ain't gonna earn no sympathy in here. Best to bottle it up deep inside and take it with you to your grave. Now, come on. Did your baby kill an ass in cell five? Move! One thing I forgot to mention, inmate. Being in Warden Turnvelt's house don't mean you're just gonna sit around all day feeling sorry for yourself. We all work during the days. Because there ain't no lesson to be learned if you're not achieved through hard work. Well, all right, I do hope everything is to your liking, and if you need anything, just holler at me and I'll come running. Now you ain't got nothing to say, smartass. Please just leave me alone. A fair request is always answered with a fair response. You keep that in mind. Sweet dreams, baby killer. I'll see you at the ash crack of dawn. All right, inmates. LIGHTS OUT! <laughs>
Have you ever seen the warden? No, but I hear that Midnight did once by accident. Story is, when they were bringing Midnight onto the row, the warden was just finishing up with an inmate, and their paths crossed in the hallway. Did he say what he was like? That's the whole story, kid. I, I know nothing else, sir. Huh? <laughs> Thanks anyway. Hey! Don't talk it on the line! Oh, Jesus, this must be it. Hey, Paul, look at me for a moment. Good. Hey, don't worry. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay, bud. Charlie, I'm... I'm... I'm scared. I, I know you are. Can I tell you a secret? I'm scared, too. It's okay to be scared when things get scary. But the most important thing to try and remember is how it feels to not be afraid. Think of something that you're not scared of. Go ahead, do it. I'm not scared of ra rabbits. <laughs> good. Rabbits are good. And they're not scary at all, right, Paul? Y yeah. That's good. Good, good, good. What else isn't scary? Keep going. Um. Well, what about trees? You like rabbits. What about trees and nature? Fields of grass as far as the eye could see. Uh, is that, the, that where the, the, the rabbits live? That's right, Paul. That's right. Charlie? Yes, Paul? Can I t tell you a s secret now? Well, of course you can. I, I d d didn't, didn't mean t to hurt no one. Her and, uh, and me was j j just p picking f flowers and, and throwing th th them in the, the creek. And the next thing I know, she w was gone. I, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to do what, what I done. I'm sure he didn't, Paul. Do you, you b b b believe me? I do. I believe you. Thank you. Thank you, Ch Ch Charlie. Well, I'm just what in the blue hell are you two grabbing out about? We're just talking. Of that, I gathered. Talking about what exactly? We we, we was j j just t t t t talking, boss. T t t Talking about nothing, really. On any other day, Paul, I swear. Boss man, n Knox. What is it, Paul? W w was you w with uh, whistling t t the, that the t t t tune for me? As a matter of fact, yes. Yes, I was, Paul. Did you like the song? You know, it's one of the warden's favorites. But as if I'm sure you've noticed, the tune is over. And do you know what that means? You have another t t t tune? Mm -hmm. Now is not the time to catch an attitude, Paul. Good a t t time as any. Oh, Paul. How I've waited for my next words to be directed towards you. S say it then. Warden Turnvelt is ready for you now. <laughs> Stay calm. Uh, I'm ready to, to meet, meet, meet him now. Hmm. Thought you were going to be more fussy. Well, all right then, let's go. G goodbye, Ch Charlie. Goodbye, Paul. G g goodbye, Jean. G goodbye, m Midnight. Goodbye, Paul. Hey, Jean. What? Where is it going to happen? You see that long door they're walking toward? Keep watching. Well, they went in. What's in there? The warden, of course. And what? An electric chair, gas chamber, injection table? How do they do it? Well, how the hell should I know? It's not my time yet. Well, what about execution witnesses? Ain't nobody else in there other than Turnvelt. Officer Prickett and old Paul. That's it. Whatever else be in there, I don't want to know. I'll find out soon enough, and so will you. 
So will everyone who comes here. I like it better this way, you yeah? know? Not annoying. Could be anything. <laughs> what lies beyond that door is different for each soul that walks through it. Only one thing is for certain. Death waits patiently in that room. Oh, uh, well, well. Suddenly he talks. Well, you guys saw how big this building is, right? I mean, our cells take up maybe a third of its space. Behind that door is the other two thirds. I can't even imagine what the hell's back there. All that room just for executions? No wonder the governor wants to shut this place down. It must cost a fortune to even keep the lights on. The governor ain't never gonna follow through. This pit of hell will continue to be fed on the wretched. It cannot be stopped. It was Joe, right? People call me Midnight. If you don't mind me asking, how long have you been here? On a row? Mm. Coming up on day 64. You've been here for over two months? What has that possible midnight? You got me. I ain't never received my DOD yet. DOD? Uh, date of death. Try and creep up, you cretin. Well, if you don't mind me asking again, what land did you in here? <laughs> Better question is what didn't land me in here. Man, I think I've done it all at least twice by now. No lie, though, I'm a terrible person. I deserve whatever's coming to me, whenever that may be. Sure, we all deserve to fry. Well, how, but how did you get caught? I was drunk. I wanted to play the lotto, so I drove up to the local stop shop, and get a few numbers, and ain't it a bitch that I forget my wallet. So I tried to explain to the clerk that I'd just live across the way and I'd be right back. And with me and him, he never really seen eye to eye on much. He wasn't having any of my bullshit that night, so he threatened to call the cops. And that's, that's when I blacked out. I finally came to about an hour later at my place, and that's when the police busted down my door. Turns out, I shot the clerk in the leg, locked him in the trunk of my ride, and then left him there. He was dead by the time anyone got to him. Jesus. Yeah, I know. It's messed up. There ain't nothing I can do to change it. Too late for me, too late for him. <laughs> yeah, bled out in your trunk. Pas un bonnet, facon de moyer. What about you, Jean? How'd you get pinched? Moi? Well, <laughs> my story is not as gruesome as Midnight's, but I'm sure it is equally as entertaining, eh? You see, the only reason I sit behind these bars chit-chatting away with you common criminals, huh? Is because I loved too much. <laughs> Shut it! You, you, uh, when you, uh, you will not be so foolish to mock me once I have told you my tale of heartache and woe. It's okay, Jean. Go ahead. Sir, as I was saying, I love too much, and it was the single greatest mistake I will ever have made. You see, I was on the job. My other two partners and I going to appropriate $2.4 million in diamonds huh? from this fancy gala party hosted by Gareth Mosley. Gareth Mosley? Damn, Jean. He's like one of the richest men in the country. He is an obnoxious trust fund to that. He does not need all of that goddamn money anyway. Yeah, you do? A uh, damn right! <laughs> so, alright, we're in. Everything is going perfectly to plan. Ten minutes until my queue. And then, we would have been out of there 2.4 million dollars richer. But, here's where they unexpected found me, huh? As I got into place to receive the handoff, my eyes gazed upon a vision. Oh, so awe-inspiring. I had completely forgotten my reasonability and walked over to introduce myself without hesitance. In turn, with my post left abandoned, our plan quickly fell apart. And before I could even hear this angel's name, gunshots filled the party's atmosphere with panic. I drew my pistol and began firing. Not until later did I realize they were police officers. I killed three of them before I got taken down with a clean shot through the gut. And as I lay there on the floor, I was sure death would be taking my hand at any moment. But wouldn't you know it? There, 
was my angel kneeling over me. I says, this must be my time, cause here I see my beautiful angel. And again, before any words could be exchanged, the goddamn pegs interrupted with their medics and restraints. <sighs> Thankfully though, my angel appeared just one last time and gave me a name to take with me. Oh, how I'll never forget my beautiful angel, Brian. <laughs> I knew you were burying the lead. What? This is amusing to you? Hey, it ain't no thing, man. To each his own. You know, I, I hate you mean that. So what about you, baby KLR? You got something to say? No. Good. Should have never told you guys nothing anyway. You wouldn't understand, you pieces of shit. So, does that freak anyone else out? What? Don't you hear it? I don't hear anything. That's the point he's trying to make. Are they all this quiet? Yeah, for the most part. Sometimes you think you might have heard something from back there, but as soon as you start listening for it, that's when it's gone. I still remain unclear on what you two are discussing. The silence. What of it? It doesn't make any sense, uh, right? There, there's a frightened man being executed no more than a hundred feet away. And only a door stands between him and us. There should be some sort of noise or audible movements heard, but instead, silence. That doesn't strike you as weird? Should it? Uh, have you never heard a soundproofing? Why are you being difficult with the man? You literally asked me that same question before. You just pissed I answered him and not you. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I couldn't care less for your validation. Hey, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause anything. We're too late. The damage is done. Don't listen to him. Ain't no damage done. You want to know what I think? I think it's a waste of time thinking about what is or isn't or what might be. Best to just focus on breathing in and out, and eventually it'll just fade away. And you find that helps? <laughs> Sometimes. I'm gonna get some rest now. I recommend you do the same. Hey, Midnight. Yeah? Is it true you've seen the warden before? No, I ain't never had the pleasure yet. Good night. Yeah. <sighs> oh, God, I see another dead man walking here. Dead man walking. <laughs> Stop here, mate. Go on. Get your ass inside the cage. Good inmate. Welcome to the end of your life. Hope you enjoyed the ride. Please, you don't understand. I found those people that way. I didn't kill anyone. Please, you gotta listen to me. You're such a disgusting waste of your daddy's spit. I hope the devil takes no part in when frying your ass in hell. <laughs> Looky here, Charlie. Seems your reputation may have just been shattered by the new inmate. What did he do? It's rare you ever find me in a position to gab on myself, but here I am. I personally found this degenerate in an abandoned warehouse that's en route for my patrol. You have a patrol route for the warden? What? No, dumbass. I have a second job with the City Knight Security. Don't interrupt me again. It's rude. Anyhow, I, uh... Notice something off about that, uh, warehouse. Call it intuition or whatever the hell, but I walked in on this sick freak covered in blood and surrounded by hacked off parts of four different women. Three of them just freshmen in college. Damn shame. Oh, that's awful. No, 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 you got it all wrong. I didn't kill those girls. They were already like that when I found them. You gotta believe me, I couldn't do something so hard. I ain't got the stomach. Well, now, why would he say that? Why? <laughs> Hell, boy, he sounds like you. Why did you say all those things? Well, because I'm innocent. <laughs> You're about as innocent as a Catholic schoolgirl. Same goes for him. Just because you got caught and regret your actions doesn't mean suddenly all is forgiven. Just like the ones who came before and will come after, you're gonna pay what you owe. We'll see. Ha! Huh. We shall see, won't we? Kiss already! Mwah, huh? Yeah, keep on laughing, french fry. 
We've got two days left, and we'll see who's laughing. <laughs> Anything else you want to say? Uh, n- no, sir, Officer Knox. Hmm, too bad my billy club could have used the workout. Sir? Excuse me, sir? It's Officer Knox. What the hell do you want, inmate? Officer Knox, I'm begging you with every fiber of my soul. Please believe me, I did not kill those people. If you didn't kill them, then who? I don't know, but you gotta believe me, it wasn't me. Hmm, tell me then why you were at an abandoned warehouse in the middle of the night. I I don't know. I can't even remember how I got there. One minute I was getting into my car to drive home from work, and the next I'm standing around a bunch of mutilated corpses and you waving a gun in my face. Last part of what you said checks out just fine, but it's already been confirmed by plenty of eyewitnesses that what you got in your car at work, you didn't drive home. Oh no. Instead, you went out gallivanting about the town, luring young women into your spiderweb of drugs and the promise of a good time. Once they were good and helpless, you took out your polished knives and hacked them into pieces. Tell me, what was it like when you skinned them? Did it all just rip off in a single skin? Or did you do it in sections? (laughs) Oh god, I'm gonna be sick. Now don't you puke on my floor, inmate. Go on, in the commode, goddammit! Spineless mutant. You know what I think? Why the hell would I care what an inmate thinks? You know what? You're right. Never mind. Hey, why did you get gum? It was Janitor Hank, wasn't it? That goddamn bastard. I told him to stop giving out bubble gum to the inmates! So, what is it you were going to say? I thought you didn't care. Are you playing mind games with me, inmate? Hate to break it to you. But I don't play games with baby killers. Why don't you bring your dumb ass in here and say that? See what happens, shithead. <laughs> Is that right? Well then, let us find out what happens. Come on. That's right. Open that door, asshole. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm really going to enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that makes two of us. Come on. Come on. Oh, you think you're tough? You okay. do not ever disrespect me! Now, I don't like being made to feel this way. Best not to bite the hand of authority, else that hand quickly turns to a fist! <coughs> you best mind yourself when I take my foot off from your neck. Uh, yes, yes. In three, two, one. <coughs> You're all right. Uh, not really, but I'll be fine. Uh. Hey, that's what you get when you tango with fire. <laughs> well. That was fun. Thanks for the stimulation. Yeah, don't mention it. All right, lights out in five. You want some aspirin before I leave? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah? I'm sure it would. Do something. (laughs) That feeling, that feeling right there. You hang on to that for the next four days, because they all die like cowards. So you'll learn to live with some respect until then. You have a good night now. You hear? Shit, hurt. Jesus, man. Hey, you all right? Uh, what the hell is wrong with you, Charlie? There's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> he jacked a key from Officer Dickhead. What key? This key. <laughs> what are you planning to do? Yes, Charlie. What is your plan now? Open your eyes, Jean. He's going to see what's beyond the door. Exactly. (laughs) Trust that only a fool would want to get a glimpse of death before their time. So you don't agree with me? Can't say that I do, Charlie. But my approval will hold no meaning once you walk through that door. You'll be on your own at that point. Have you lost your dickhead mind? And how exactly were you planning on getting out of your cell? 
It's been locked. Has it? <laughs> Ta-da! What the? How did you do that? Jammed the lock with gum when he stormed in. Uh, look, I know where our schedule to die, but are you trying to get yourself killed? What are you expecting to find behind that door? I have no idea, but I do know something's not right here. I was framed, and I am willing to bet that this new guy was too. And Charlie, by the way. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Jimmy. And thank you for believing me, I could never kill anyone. <laughs> I can't even stand to kill a spider. Hey, uh, could I borrow one of your pillows? Yeah, sure. Here you go. Uh, thanks, Jimmy. So, what you doing? In case Nightwatch comes in, it'll look like I'm in bed sleeping. Yeah, you're pretty smart. Yeah, there. That should fool him, from a distance at least. Charlie? Yeah, Midnight? You understand that you're running the risk of not coming back out that door again. Yes, I know the consequences. All right, just making sure. Hey, uh, I just wanted to say, you know, I don't think you're a bad person. I know you've done some things in your life that were bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I once robbed the same lady three times. So... As I head out toward my journey, I would like to say to you that it was a pleasure to meet you, Joseph. Likewise, Johnny. I'll be seeing you soon, I'm sure. Hang on, I don't get that heartfelt goodbye. Sean? Well, you're a real asshole, but I enjoyed your company. I wish we could have met under different circumstances. Bet we would have been friends. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Go on. Get the hell out of here before someone else shows up, huh? All right. Here we go. Hello? I can't see anything. Hello? How is it this impossibly dark? The duck provides an ideal audience to my home. Our boys love the darkness. So calming, so pleasant. You, you're able to see what you're doing in this kind of darkness? With the ease, so it's like most things can be built. Overcome the one's environment. Your eyes will soon adjust and objects will begin to appear in view. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon for me. Please, is, is there any light that we could turn on or something? I, I, I want to see who it is that I'm speaking to. Hmm. Yes, I suppose. I can oblige. Man, is that the other one you chose? What? What? Ch 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 big buck a gigant spy spider? What? Oh, calm down. Charlie, you're gonna give yourself a heart attack. Just take a nice deep breath and uh, realize what I am. Did I already die? Is this hell? Am I in hell right now? I just see it be calm, shall we? Best to just need to start breathing in and out and eventually I'll just fade away. Okay. Okay. Are we calm now? Yeah, I'm calm. Good. You're a giant talking spider. Technically, I'm not actually talking. My rebel wounds do not function the same way as humans. I'm speaking to you now through our minds. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Is your spider web glowing? Yes. You said you needed light to see correct. I, I suppose I did. Okay, next question. What? I, I, what? <laughs> I enjoy your humor. I'll allow me to simplify things for you. I am of the alien species, Arachnavian. In a space time a world in which people have been extinct for hundreds of thousands of years. I, 
being the last of my kind, voyaged across the stars and the search for a new home. In 6,000 years ago, I found her. I gotta say, I absolutely love your planet. It's never failed to provide. Um, glad you like it. You know you're a giant spider, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's that human again. So infectious. Yes, I realize to you and to most all humans I bear striking resemblance to one of your Earth's creatures, the arachnid or a spider. Yeah, but you're massive. You're you're like the size of a small house. Okay. My size lacks in comparison to others of my kind. What, what is the earth term I'm looking for? I would have been conceded a rat of a little. Okay. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> uh, mm, <clears throat> okay. Wait. So you've been on Earth for six thousand, six thousand years. Six. Six thousand years? Correct. <laughs> all, all the things you must have seen and experienced. That's, that's amazing. Yes, well, I personally have never left this location. However, because of my race, I'm able to view and experience human lives through their bodies and minds. Yes. Throughout my time, I have been witness to many a great and wondrous things, as well as many terrible tragedies. Let's, uh, let's, let's put a pin right there for a moment. Um, ah, uh, oh boy. Uh, loop, loop back around to where you said that you can live through other people's bodies and minds? <clears throat> What? Well, that's roughly the same idea as how I'm speaking with you. Uh, humans developed a terminology to describe it best. I believe it's referred to as telepathy. Whoa. Okay. Uh, is there is there a chair somewhere? I I gotta sit down. Of course. I can do you one better. I'll make you a seat. Come here. Please take a phone off. Uh, you see. That humor is infectious. Are you feeling better? Yeah. So... How... Have you been getting away? With, uh... Oh, jeez. Okay, okay, okay. How have you been getting away with this for so long? Seriously. You said that you've never physically left this location. How... How is it you're even in this building? Also, where is the real Warden Turnvelt? Well, to anyone who finds me, I just telepathize them. Is that the right word? Telepathize? Hypnotize could work. Ah, uh, yes, hypnotize. Thank you, Charlie. So, yes, I hypnotize him if it happens to find me. And they just go about living their lives, and sometimes I eat them. And as far as Turnvelt is concerned, it's just some guy in my influence. I need to make necessary public appearances. Okay. So, let's put a, another pin right there for a moment. Um, did, did you just say that sometimes you eat people? Oh yeah, well, that's actually all I eat. I can't consume human food because it lacks the proper nutrition I need to survive. Oh. <laughs> so I see. <clears throat> And, uh, okay, okay, okay. So, I, I assume that's why you went under the guise of a death row warden, then. Your assumptions are correct. What better than a constant flow of degenerates to feed from? In a way, I'm carrying out a public service by spreading the world on the guilty. Okay. Seriously, I have never been so dumbfounded by anything. Is this real? I, I mean, seriously, is this really happening right now? I am really having a telepathy. Tele what is the telepathic uh, conversation with the giant alien spider who's thousands of years old? Right? This is real. Two hundred and fifty-six thousand years to be exact. Two hundred and. 
56,000. Damn! This is... This is a metric ton of shit to process. It always is on my first time. So, Charlie, you can't make it for me, is it? I was sentenced to die on your row. Um, that's not even aware. I'm aware of everything, Charlie. Are you aware of what Officer Knox may be doing? Please explain. He just brought in some kid fresh from a brutal sounding murder scene. Ian? And the kid didn't do it. He's an innocent, like me. Are you implying that Officer Knox freed that young man for murder? That is exactly what I'm implying. And now, I have reason to suspect that my situation falls under his shadow. Why would he commit murder? Well, he knows about you, right? Of course. Officer Knox has been a loyal servant to me for over 15 years now. He understands that the innocent must benefit from our work. And are you sure he still understands that? Mm -hmm. I must admit, the thought of his treachery causes great unrest within me. I shall resolve this confusion. Donald Knox, cease what you're doing and report to me at once. <clears throat> Quick question. Uh, did you just summon him with your mind? I did. You should be arriving any moment. So, um... Do you watch any TV or movies? Yes, I can pick up on some transmissions. Seen anything good lately? Well, since we're talking about it, I love that TV show, Friends. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good one. Are, wait, are you just now watching it? I'm trying to get caught up, but, you know, there are games. Everyone wants your attention. Sure, I get you. So, what's the deal with my pension, Are they never gonna make or what? You know, what? Don't tell me. Oh, I just wanted to be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wouldn't want to ruin that one for you. Oh man, so does that mean no? Yeah, yes and no? Well, you see, there was this, um... No, no, never mind. Don't tell me. Well, what, what season are you on? I just started season four. Oh, cool. Then don't sweat it. Uh, you'll get your answer soon enough. Ah, damn it, you beast. No, I want to watch Friends. Is there even a TV in here? So sorry I'm late, Master. Must have fallen off somewhere. Do you know why the door was already unlocked? You son of a bitch! Step away from the master! Calm yourself, Don. Charlie is a guest in my presence. And yeah, will not be disturbed as this understood. Yes, master. Good. Now holster your weapon. You know how I despise firearms. Master? Why is this inmate in here with you? I'll allow him to meet me. But why? Is that relevant? No, I, I suppose not. Now cease speaking and listen. Charlie will give me some pretty hefty claims against you. What kind of claims? Claims of murder, treachery, against the way I run things around here. Lies, Master. He's feeding you nothing but lies. My loyalty is with you always. I could never betray you. Never! I shall have the truth. Remain still, Donald, as I look into your inner master's mind. I don't think that should be necessary. Ah, oh, jeez. <sighs> oh, my foolish friend. Why have you committed all of these atrocities? Why? I did it for you! I always have. Me! I shouldn't be judged for my loyal servitude! I should be commended! Rewarded, even! You will align yourself in my presence! Yes, yes, Master, I'm sorry. <sighs> I do not let your actions go unnoticed, though. I only wanted to keep you alive. I did what I did for your benefit. It is not to my benefit. It is, and should always be, for the benefit of the innocent. Yet here you are, deeming them in my name. If not for me driving up them numbers, we would have had to close our doors years ago! 
Nemo was a jewel place to create false judgment on the human life. If Charlie had not had the courage to face the unknown in order to seek out his freedom, he would have died, and he would have been the cause. Is that something you thought of before taking matters into your own hands? Did you think you could live with the ghost of your victims? Reckon I didn't think that far ahead. I was only focused on making sure our work continues. And therein lies your fault. You became too focused on the wrong thing, and you let yourself do terrible acts of hate against others. This is unacceptable. I'm sorry for what I've done. Please, give me another chance. I'll show you that I can do better! As it was explained by I took you under my employ, I do not tolerate disrespect. I'll sympathy for the guilty, and I do not offer second chances. Please, Master. I've been so completely faithful and devoted to your service. I'm begging you! Please offer my pathetic soul the one last chance to serve you. Please, Master. Your time has reached its end. I'm truly sorry our partnership had you expired. Goodbye, Donald. <laughs> Holy shit! Is... is... is he...? No, not quite. I drained him of only 45% of his fluids. He remains alive now. I'm not ready to conclude his punishment just yet. Maybe after a decade, his soul will have learned its lesson. <clears throat> May I ask, uh, uh, another question? <laughs> you may. What is to become of me? Now that, you know, uh, I, I, I've been found innocent? Mm. Yes. Charlie, I would like to answer your question with one of my own. How would you like to work for me? What? Uh, well, um, <clears throat> what exactly do you mean by work for you? Well, the officer knocks gone now. I have a vacancy to fill in his position. Are you serious? Well, f f <clears throat> okay. First off, how? Because technically, I am still a convicted criminal. Secondly, what? You want me to be your death row guard? I don't even know if I have the guts to even do something like that. Thirdly, and you know, please excuse my frank behavior because I was just propositioned a job by a giant alien spider. All of your concerns can easily be dealt with by myself. Look at it this way, Charlie. You will be getting back to the world in such a positive way. You admitted that man is inherently evil in nature. My employee will only help to eradicate man's wickedness from the world, so what do you say? Are you midnight? I only inhibit his body. So that's why he's still on the row. I enjoy his company. Right? I mean, I didn't believe he was a bad guy. Nor did I. He's just only been misunderstood by the world around him. Midnight is better off being in his cell than out on the streets where bad boy can find him. Yeah, I, uh, I suppose that makes sense. Does he know about what you really are? No one other than yourself carries the knowledge of my existence. So, Charlie, get to my proposition. What say you? Be at my side on the fight against evil? It feels like I've experienced a full lifetime in such a short period. Relatively, you know, because. I know you've been around for a while, <laughs> and moments for you, I guess, must pass like seconds. <clears throat> what I'm trying to say here is, I'm scared to face the unknown, and with your proposition, it only makes things more ambiguous. But I've never really known myself to shy away from the unknown, you know, it's just... Oh God, and seeing how I, I'm sure ex you know, accepting your offer is my only option I have <laughs> for a somewhat normal life again, you know. I, 
I see. <laughs> I see. Oh, fuck. There are other alternatives to be had. If you so wish to explore those options. Um, much, much appreciated. But I'd rather not even open that can of worms. <laughs> can of worms? I like this expression. Yeah, so, um, I guess I accept your offer. This place is me, Charlie, and I deeply appreciate your trust and honesty. I truly feel that our partnership will produce nothing but outstanding results. So, um, what do, what do I call you? Master? Warden? Or do you have a name? In all my years and all my assistance, I'll link to you a that it is my real name. Really? That seems a bit insensitive. Thank you. My name is Bernard, son of Alpha, of the planet Ekerin. Do, uh, I have to say all of that each time? <laughs> I love your humor, Charlie. You may just call me Bernard. Alright. Vernock it is, then. So, um, what do we do now? Well, I am still a bit hungry. We could just move up the Jean St. Gilroy's execution date. Oh, uh, to win. R right now? Yeah. Best way to find a new job is to dive right in. Uh, seems a little soon. <laughs> Maybe we could just watch Friends for now. Mm. All tempting. I need to feed. Let's bump up old Jean to the top of the list. Here's your new set of keys to the prison. Go and fetch Jean for me. <laughs> okay, uh, whatever you say. Hey, Jean. Well? What is it? Um... Come on, Charlie, spit it out. What's behind that door? You have to... you have to see it for yourself. Come on, I'll show you. I don't want to go in there. Just tell me what you saw. You wouldn't believe me even if I did tell you. How did you get Officer Dickhead's key ring? It was given to me. Where is he? You did see him in there, no? Yeah, I saw him. And? Come on, what's wrong with you? Tell me what's going on. I can't, goddammit. You have to see for yourself. What about Knox? Is he still in there? Sort of. He won't be a problem. Charlie, you're starting to freak me out, man. Yeah, just come on, John. Let's go. Absolutely not. Now piss off. This is your last chance to go freely, John. Listen to Charlie. What the hell are you talking about, Midnight? Come on. Go with Charlie. All right, you two. Very funny, but I refuse to be the butt of any but a stupid jerk. This is no joke, John. I don't want to leave with you. It's not my time yet to discover what lies beyond that door. I'm sorry, Jean. So this is it, huh? Unto my own death. You won't be alone. We'll face it together. I prefer facing it alone over you empathetically holding my hand as death rips my tainted soul. I'll make my own way. I always have, always will. Hey, Charlie. Yeah, Jimmy? What's happening right now? Nothing to concern yourself with, and I'm gonna get you out of here as soon as I'm able, okay? But, Charlie, I don't understand. Probably best that you don't. I I've gotta go now. You know, I don't get you, Charlie. One minute you're completely adamant about finding the truth, and after only ten minutes of being in that room, you turn into this. I found the answers to all my questions. Then tell me what's back there. You're about to find out. <sighs> Charlie, I, I can't see anything. It's too dark in here. Yeah, your eyes will adjust in a moment. Uh, Vernock, lights, please. What is that, man? A giant spider. What? How is this? Is it possible? This is impossible. This is impossible, Charlie. What's happening? What is that? What is that thing, Charlie? What is that thing, Charlie? Well, I wouldn't say it's completely impossible. Very peculiar and odd, without a doubt, you know, but 
Impossible? Well, stranger things have happened, I suppose. Why aren't you scared? No reason to be. I mean, at first, I, I, I look just like you do now. <laughs> However, uh, after a pleasant conversation with Vernock, I, I found an appreciation for what he's doing here. I'm humbled by your respect, Charlie. Jesus Christ, he can talk! Oh, I know, right? That's a little off putting when I'm first exposed. I must already be in hell to stand witness to such a foul creature. Hey, there's no need for name calling. It's quite alright, Charlie. Believe I can manage it from here. Thank you. You don't exceptionally well for your first day in the job. Uh, thank you, Vernock. Uh, it was actually a lot easier than I thought. It probably proved to be easier at the time. You are dismissed with the evening. Please check with Officer Thompson on your way out. We'll provide you all the necessary amenities to begin a new life. Thank you once again, Vernock. Oh, um, I have one more thing before I leave. What is it? The other innocent on the row, Jimmy. What should I do with him? Ah, uh, yes, the other innocent. Just a moment. There, off the hook, Kira. You may release him on the way out. I will pay you Officer Thompson with the situation. Thank you. You're most welcome, Charlie. Now, go enjoy your new life. I absolutely will. And, uh... I'll see you tomorrow for our friends marathon, right? I wait with bated breath. Friends like the TV show? <laughs> yeah. Eh, hey, I love friends. Ross, Rachel, Joey, Monica, Chandler, and Phoebes. Come on, Central Perk, am I right? Ah, uh, damn it. I know, right? It makes you want to watch it right now, huh? I know, right, you bastard. <laughs> All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, Charlie. Hey, no. Wait, Charlie, come back. Do not leave me in here with this thing. Charlie! Charlie! Oh. Hey. Hey, look. Huh? Uh, I, I, I know I've done some pretty awful shit in my life, all right? But come on. I don't deserve to go out like this, not like this. You deserve all the punishment on your poster upon you, Sean. You are evil, and evil must be stopped. But I'm not honest. I'm not evil. No. No, please, I'm not evil. Do you go? No, no. Get away from me. No, no, no. Let's be out. Jimmy, you ready to get the hell out of here? Am I? Let's do it then. I almost can't believe this is happening right now. Yeah, seems to be a lot of that going around tonight. But hey, beats the hell out of spending another second locked up here. Hate that the truth. All right, midnight. You keep on being you. I'll see you tomorrow. You mean you coming back to this place? Looks to be that way. What the hell went on behind that door, man? <laughs> Well, I got a job for starters. Wait, for real? Hey, Officer Thompson, right? The one and only. Myself and Jimmy were sent here to see you by Warden Turnville. Yes, indeedy. Yeah, apologies for the hold up. Oh, no worries. All right. So, Charlie Grayson, I bet that's you. Correct. Here's your release papers absolving you of any previous criminal history. Here's your gift bag, as I like to call it. <laughs> Contains your uniform, badge, holster, one Glock handgun, a new cell phone, numbers written down on a piece of paper I folded inside your wallet, list continued, one belt, a pair of shoes, and an extra pair of socks, just in case. Welcome to the force, by the way. Everyone just keeps on talking about the new guard and death row. All good things, of course. Okie dokie, let's see what else I've got for you. Oh, here's your personal possessions that you came in with. If you would, do a spot check to make sure it's all accounted for. Sure thing. It seems to be all there. Um, wait, I'm missing a... Oh, I gotcha. I didn't want it to get damaged. Here's your picture. Uh, thank you. And 
said, if you'll take a quick notice inside your wallet, it has been fitted with an up-to-date checking account and credit card information because this job has its perks, am I right? <laughs> oh, did anyone else just get the hankering to watch friends? Ah, you know, job has its perks, central perk, <laughs> am I right? Oh, sometimes I'm just too much. Oh, you'll also find a house key and an address with your new residence. We hope you like it. Okay, I presume you must be Jimmy Saunders. That's me. Okie dokie, looks like we have your release papers. Same info applies. All previous criminal history has been absolved from this point moving forward. That means it's very important as you move forward with your life to remember just how lucky you are and how close you came to die in the death of a guilty soul. Right, Charlie? Yeah, that's right. opportunity to serve and an opportunity to die. When compared, which will you favor? Either or, you are damned to suffer one way or another. Herein lies our freedom. <laughs> Thus concludes tonight's strange fantasy. Tune in next time for another look into the strange and obscure. Strange Fantasy presented Song of the Warden. Written and produced by Travis Scarborough and Ashley Scarborough. Original score by Travis Scarborough. The players of tonight's tale are as follows. Travis Scarborough is Charlie Grayson. Trey Gonzalez is Officer Donald Knox. Ashley Scarborough as Officer Thompson and Vernock, the Spider Warden. Heath Allen as Attorney Carl Finster and Midnight. Dale Russell Green Jr. as Police Officer and Paul Hamm. Robert C. Williams as Jimmy. And Martina Olhauser as Carol and Judge Hammerfeld. Strange Fantasy was created by Travis Scarborough and co-created by Trey Gonzalez. Strange Fantasy is copyright 2018 Strange Fantasy Productions All Rights Reserved. All characters appearing in this work are fictitious. Any resemblance to real persons living or dead is purely coincidental.